I actually originally meant for today to be a day in the life type of episode. I went and worked with my cousin at the black market fair here in Houston, but it didn't work out that way. So in the plant, what are you talking about? Gas you gotten from evening or dispensary? Or are you talking about hip flour, C B D flour? It's all cannabis. Delta 9, that's that gas that gives you a real strong high. We can't sell that above 0.3, but we can sell Delta 8 THC, which is like the little brother cannabinoid. To be completely honest with you, I was talking way too much in terms of doing sales, in terms of teaching people about Delta 8, teaching people about CBD. Honestly, mostly Delta 8. That's what everybody wanted to know about. And just going through the many things you have to do to kind of survive at an open market fair type situation that black market is. So today I'll be going to black market here in Houston. What view should I do? Should I do the, no, that's too dark. I'm too dark for that. Today I'll be going to black market here in Houston. It is a black marketplace essentially. Um, not for black market items, but for black people. And today I'll be working with Leaf Life CBD, helping them sell some of their Delta Aid products, sell some of their CBD products, inform the community about what's going on. And I'm gonna shoot a vlog while I'm there, hopefully. And I'm obviously only be seeing this if the vlog does come to fruition, but if it doesn't, oh well. But if it does, that'd be dope. So let's see how this Saturday goes. See you guys later. So instead I decided to do this video a little bit different, kind of just to talk about the state of Delta 8 a little bit and my experiences and what I experienced with being at this black market event. My cousin, he needed a little bit of help with his shop. So he has a shop called Leaf Life CBD over in Pearland, Texas. So on the east side of Houston over here in a really good way to get some exposure and to get your name out in the CBD space, in the Delta A space, in the cannabis space in general, especially here in Texas, is to go to a lot of these trade shows, a lot of these fairs, and in my opinion, target those ones that don't have tons of cannabis products there. Um, it will be a different situation even at this current place if there were five, six places that had Delta 8 products. It's the perfect place for my cousin to set up shop. It's the perfect place to teach people about Delta 8 because you're in a market or in a place to where it's not a lot of people that know about it. I um, mean, if you guys have been to like the kind of cannabis markets, conventions, things like that, um, Delta 8 is like that prime thing there. Everybody has Delta 8 right now. So it's cool that it's an opportunity for us to put people on to Delta 8, if you will, that really wouldn't find out about it either, otherwise because there is no TV marketing, not even any radio marketing, not any, it's really just word of mouth, Instagram, or you have to walk into a shop or a gas station maybe and you'll find some. We're setting up for a black market. Uh, it's a every, every first Friday and second Saturday of the month. Uh, it's been going on for, I believe, about four years now. Here in Houston, Texas, by yes, the way. Here in Houston, for sure. Uh, you know, a lot of great black owned businesses and vendors. Uh, we try to be a part of it as much as we can. Um, today is a Saturday, uh, Fridays are in the evenings, and it's just a dope event, man. From food to, you know, clothing to accessories, you name it, they got it here. You know, it's all black owned. And it's beautiful, man. It's That's what's up. That's what's up. I'm excited for it. So yeah, today we will be coming to you from Black Market. It's going to be a random ass vlog because I don't know what's going to happen. We'll see how many people show up. Sometimes a lot of people show up to these things. Sometimes not a lot of people do, but we'll see what happens today. These events are cool. It's a lot of millennial age to even elder black people really that congregate and shop at all these different black stores black owned stores not just like black stuff but like black owned stores there is no such thing as black stuff really maybe the nba i don't know but black owned stores and it's interesting i have some stuff written down here because y'all know i be smoking a good amount and i forget some shit i've personally got to see leaf life grow 
Um, I was around when it was first getting started and they were just really breaking ground on the storefront, at least around the process, trying to do my part really with the channel and stuff like that to help um, get Leaf Life a little bit of exposure. But at the same time, it's been cool to see them work, them do what they need to do, them being Nick um who's my cousin and then bradford who is another owner of the shop on this day i was just hanging out with nick and it was interesting to see what goes into it because at the end of the day it's a business you know we're trying to put out delta 8 we're trying to put out cbd we're trying to let people know about its existence but at the same time in order for me to help his business grow he has to get more sales so i'm there trying to teach people about delta 8 and a lot of people have learned about delta 8 from this event um, i've been in the shop a decent amount now and a lot of people that come to the shop, they went to this event, saw Leaf Life, and they drove. And if you're from Houston, man, people are driving from like the west side of Houston all the way to the east to go to Leaf Life to get some of their products because Leaf Life really does have some premium, especially Delta 8 products. I mean, at this point, Delta 8 is the product that people are going into these shops looking for. Just hands down, that's just how it is. I always have a screen on sale right now, the upper echelons on sale at $15 for eight or $8 a pre roll. The ghost train is a normal price, twelve dollars a pre-roll, thirty-eight. Uh, nothing synthetic, no. I can tell you where my growers are and everything. Uh, and everything has lab reports. What's going on? What's going on? Try that. And we take cash card, cash app. Wow, I got it. Yeah, and we do straight money. Enjoy. If nothing else, please follow us on IG. I'm always curious, like, you know, coming from Cali. Let me know. My name's Nick. If you DM, like, I control that page, so if you DM, that's what you're talking to me. Okay, good. I appreciate y'all's support. Okay. Sure. And that leads me into a lot of interesting conversations I had with people about Delta 8. And a few observations I really had about Delta 8. One, a lot of people have gone to these illegal states, such now mostly being Las Vegas, some Denver, but mostly Las Vegas, and have had really bad experiences with Delta 9 THC. All right, Delta 9 THC is a product that can vary a lot, and for whatever reason, um, especially, I say this just because this is my personal um, experience, but many, many women specifically who want to dip their toes into the cannabis space or into the weed space, they go for edibles first. And I think that is the worst mistake that people make. I think the worst mistake that people make is for their first time smoking, or their first time, not it's not smoking, their first time consuming cannabis in any form, people go straight into edibles. People go to Las Vegas and they eat an edible. People go to Denver and they eat edible. People go to Oregon and they eat edible and they're like, I don't like weed, keep that shit away from me. And it's because of a, a stigma thing. People, it makes people feel weirder to do a science experiment and hit a dab. It makes people feel weird to smell like potentially a J or a blunt or something like that. Um, and even the carts, you see all the scary news about stuff that poisoned people from these fake carts and stuff. So people are scared of that as well. But a gummy, a cookie, um, they have um an association a comfortability with that in their own lives and because of that they ruin their experience with cannabis so i might even make this a separate little snippet uh, guys i really urge you not to do that but a lot of people have done that and so to connect back to my regular point and my normal point um, delta 8 thc is something that honestly fits a lot of these people because they get shocked by Delta 9. Delta 9 is getting strong and even if they do choose to smoke some there and it's their first time they've smoked in 10 years since college, whatever you know people say, um, Delta 8 a lot of times with the carts and things like that can ease people back into it or give them something lighter to smoke, not get so fucked up. Because now when you're going to Colorado, you're going to Vegas, you're going to California and you're not a regular smoker, that Delta 9 is going to fuck you up. Especially if you don't know what you're choosing. Because the person behind that counter, they're just going to sell you the strongest product. More than likely. Because they're a salesperson and they don't make very much money. 
it's it's just so dangerous but that brings people back to texas a lot of people liking delta 8 so many people walk up to the table so many people walk into the shop and say man that delta 8 stuff's nice i went out to cali i went out to la i would obviously the same place but i went out to uh, Seattle and I tried one of those gummies and I couldn't even enjoy myself but these Delta 8 they still allow me to relax I can still this lady said it took her to a level of like higher thinking she felt like not to make a pun but in terms of higher clearer thinking she's like man my head cleared up so much from it that's what one of the customers said the other day and so this is just kind of stuff I wanted to share with you guys about why people have told me they like Delta 8. Because I Delta 8 is not my primary source of cannabis, for real. I smoke a, a lot of Delta 9 flour. Um, Delta 8 primarily would be edibles for me. And I eat the edibles decently often. Um, but in terms of just smoking, Delta 9 flour is typically my go-to. So I also, in this time, wanted to kind of learn why do people like Delta 8? What makes the perfect Delta 8 customer? And so many of them are middle-aged women, middle-aged to younger women who went on vacation, tried Delta 9 edibles, and it ruined their experience. And Delta 8 edibles ended up being the perfect medium for them. And that's just my experience. I'm not saying that women cannot handle Delta 9. I am not saying that men handle it better because there are a lot of men that have that story too. But... <laughs> Women, one, in public are not scared about buying edibles or what anybody else thinking. There were some men who like self-conscious or worried about what their date might think. And no. So that women would just walk into the table. So that was a big reason why we also had a large demographic. And we were at a trade fair to which there was a lot, of, a lot of jewelry, a lot of art, a lot of stuff that would attract women shoppers more. So it was very, very interesting getting to see why women would like Delta 8 more. Because on my channel, I'm a guy... I be having guys come on and talk and smoking and shit. I've looked at the subscriber demographic. Most of the people that subscribe and watch my content are men. Therefore, I'm getting a lot of male opinions, a lot of male feedback, a lot of all that. And it was a great opportunity at this trade fair um, black market to get to hear a lot more women's opinions. And it was a huge reason why we sold or got to sell a decent amount of edibles is because so many women love Delta 8 edibles and edibles in general. I think the Fridays like be popping a little bit more because it's like an after work thing. First off, it's a cheap date. It's like yeah. five bucks for a ticket. Right. So I, I peeped that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but it's right in the mix, six to 10 on Fridays. So you can come in here for a little bit, then you can like go hit a bar, turkey leg hood down the street, that type of thing. You yeah. know? So it's a dope uh, starter event, you know what I mean? And whether that's because they're worried about the stigma, whether they're worried about the smell, or whether they just flat out want to try edibles, um, that is what they tend to gravitate to. And that was probably my biggest takeaway from this. And it's, it's something I knew already, but it was great to get the feedback and talk to people. A lot of people were sitting there talking about the fact that um, they'll cut the Delta 8 edibles in half. And so they'll like obviously lengthen out the amount of time they get to keep the edibles and that half is perfect for them, especially because um, Leaf Life has varying levels of edibles and like they had the 25, 30 milligrams and then they have some 60 milligrams. So people have their different little recipes about how much they need at what time of the day and stuff like that. So just hearing this feedback, it was cool. It was cool and there's not too much negative feedback at the end of the day. A lot of people... Um, that had been to the table before, seen Leaf Life at Black Market before. Um, they didn't need to be sold again. They were like, oh, it was great last time. But there were a lot of newcomers, which is great. Getting to get out into the community, expose people to the legal cannabis products that Leaf Life has available, um, that are available to everyone in the state of Texas. It's cool to do. I'm really glad I got to do it, to be honest. I'm sorry I didn't get more film of it or more like yeah in time i was doing a lot of educating and there wasn't a ton of space either like i i couldn't really just set up a camera and then have it out and then you have to ask all these people for permission and all this other type of stuff and they're playing copywritten music all loud all in the place so there were a lot of barriers to me making this video that's why you got me here writing down notes and talking to you guys Delta 8 is cool. It's cool because it's pushing the market forward. 
Is it where the market will end up? Who knows? People are always asking what's going to happen to Delta 8 um, when Delta 9 becomes legal. Who, who the fuck cares? I, I Some people would ask us that at the table and shit. And I was like, I have... Do you know? Do you know? Hey, lady selling candles behind me. Do you know? Hey, lady with the with the hoop earrings that say Black Power. Do you know what's gonna? No, nobody knows what's gonna happen. It's the market we're in right now, and it's pushing forward. It doesn't really matter what's gonna happen. CBD came. Now Delta Eight's here. Delta Nine will come. They'll find other cannabinoids. They'll find other products. What's gonna happen when Amazon gets to ship it? We don't know what's going to happen when China actually gets on the wave. We don't know what's going to happen when Europe catches up. I don't understand why people always act like they can predict the future. I know that's me on a soapbox, but it, it, it's annoying. It's annoying because business is something that's always changing, and the cannabis business is nothing different at all. And so... I like Delta 8. I talk about Delta 8 so much because it is a legal option. A lot of people will not enter. I was talking to Strange Show, Matt from Strange Show about this. A lot of people will not enter the cannabis space until they feel comfortable because something's legal. So us being out there in the community, my cousin Nick being out there in the community is something that is truly showing people and actually telling people like yo this is legal this shit is available to you and people are giving it a try a lot of people that would never try it otherwise a lot of people that would not try it from a dealer living in an apartment uh, would not go somewhere and try gummies made out of some guy's house but they're mass produced they have coas they make them feel good so with that being said it, it is very important to let people know in my opinion, about what their options are. And that is kind of my role. That is Leaf Life's role. Um, I appreciate Leaf Life for letting me tag along, letting me experience, letting me see kind of what cannabis is like in Texas right now and what the general temperature is because there's a lot of educating to do. A lot of people don't know what's going on. You know, a lot of people are like, yeah, I've heard of the Delta 8 stuff. What's it about? That's what everybody's answer is, you know? But the research wasn't there or they haven't talked to enough people like us they haven't watched enough videos like this you know hopefully i don't burn my head watch but i promise i would have left it in the video if i had guys you've seen i've been doing some collaborations on my channel the cannabis library um if you guys have any creators that you would want me to collaborate with hit me up hit them up tell them we should connect whatever we should do a session because that'd be dope i'd love to smoke with all the different smokers on youtube that shit would be sick shout out nick shout out leaf life shout out bradford shout out keith shout out darion shout out karen shout out everybody associated with leaf life um definitely a shop on the come up out here in houston and it was a fun experience shout out to the people that stopped by the leaf life table here in houston Next time there's a black market, more than likely Leaf Life will be there. If you want to know more, you can check out their Instagram. You can check out their Twitter. They be on uh, TikTok now. Shit. Because y'all know I be on TikTok. <laughs> y'all for sure know I be on TikTok. But either way, it's interesting getting to see the perspective of uh, the cannabis industry growth from the inside of a shop because that's where it's starting like shop by shop all these different people really need to come together because cannabis is a business that's young and it's in its infancy but it's going to need those movers and shakers to kind of get it off of its feet and to to push the cannabis industry forward so it's moving here in texas guys that is a positive news and we'll see where it goes from here appreciate you guys tuning in with me once again it's been a fun episode this is an episode that i didn't plan on doing like this but i still like how it came out that's something for you other content creators out there even if the video doesn't come out how you want it to come out it can still come out <laughs> oh it's been another episode see you guys later i smell like gas Everybody been saying something.